The purpose of this video is to teach the listener the correct positioning, technical factors, and image evaluation criteria for the parietal acanthial waters and modified waters projections. The waters projection is included in both the facial bone and sinus series. The clinical indications for this projection in the facial bone series would be fractures, mainly of the orbital roof, neoplastic or inflammatory processes, and foreign bodies of the eye. The clinical indications for the sinus series include polyps, cysts, and sinusitis. Technical factors for the waters projection include an SID of 40 inches, an 8x10 or 10x12 lengthwise image receptor, a grid, 70 to 80 kV for analog systems, or a range of 75 to 80 kV for digital. AEC is not recommended for this image. It is important to shield radiosensitive regions not in the area of interest. Before imaging any patient, make sure you correctly identify them with two different identifiers. Remove all artifacts from the head and neck, such as glasses, earrings, and any removable dentistry. The most recommended position for this projection is upright. The patient may stand or sit at the upright wall bucky. This ensures a horizontal beam which is necessary for sinus imaging to demonstrate air and fluid levels. Depending on the condition of the patient, he or she may lie in the prone position on the radiographic table. It is important to remember that in this position, air and fluid levels cannot be seen because the beam is not horizontal. When positioning the patient, the first step is to place the patient's chin to the image receptor. Next, maneuver the patient's head and neck to place the mentomiatal line perpendicular to the IR. To ensure the MML is perpendicular, check to see that the OML is 37 degrees to the IR. The mid-sagittal plane must be perpendicular to the IR to make sure there is no rotation or tilt reported in the final image. Putting all of that together, we have a properly positioned patient with the chin to the IR, the MML perpendicular to IR, no rotation as checked for by palpating the mastoid processes, and the MSP is perpendicular to the IR. For CR positioning, we have a horizontal beam perpendicular to and centered to the IR. The CR is to enter the back of the head and to exit at the acanthion. In the final image, you should see the maxillary sinuses free from superimposition of the peaches ridges, the inferior orbital rim, and an oblique view of the frontal sinuses. There should be no rotation of the cranium as demonstrated by equal distance from the lateral orbital margin to the MSP and the lateral aspect of the skull. Collimation to the area of interest should be noted, and the density and brightness and contrast should be sufficient to visualize the sinuses, and the sharp bony margins should indicate no motion. An alternative view of the waters projection is the open mouth waters or transoral projection. This view has the same positioning as waters but with an open mouth. It is an alternative for a patient that cannot complete an SMV. The clinical indications for this projection are sinusitis, secondary osteomyelitis, sinus polyps, and cysts. The image evaluation criteria is the same as the waters, except the sphenoid sinuses are shown within the open mouth. The modified waters is done for the same reasons as the waters, but has a focus on the floors of the orbits. This projection is used when a patient cannot fully extend to the MML. The technical factors for the modified waters are the same as the parietal canthial waters. The only way that positioning differs from the waters to the modified waters is that the lips meatal line is perpendicular to the IR, forming a 55 degree angle to the OML. To sum it up, a correctly positioned patient will have their chin to the board, LML and MSP perpendicular to IR, and no rotation. There is a horizontal beam centered and perpendicular to the IR. The CR should enter the back of the head, exit at the acanthion. In the final image, the orbital floor should have a less distorted view of the orbital rims than in the water's projection. Petrus ridges should be in the lower one half of the maxillary sinuses and no rotation should be evident by measuring the distance from lateral orbital margins to the mid-sagittal plane and lateral aspect of the skull. 
Contrast and density should be sufficient to show the orbital floors and sharp bony margins should indicate no motion.